I want to quickly mention this as well. So I randomly stumbled across an interview with Gary Vaynerchuk on the guy called oh, what's his name again? It's a light. He's a he's a black dude, light skin guy who does a lot of uh, business podcasts here in the UK. I think his name's like Dario, the CEO. He sat down with Gary Vaynerchuk and he had a really cool interview with him, which I um, was surprised to see because I haven't seen any Gary Vaynerchuk content in a while. And the reason why I said that is because I am a fan of his Gary V which is weird to say because a lot of people don't really have to say that with big breaths. But for me, he was always a bit um, someone motivational and inspiring to watch and look at early on. And I read a lot of his books and stuff and would follow him on his channel and see the people that came in and out of VaynerMedia. I even applied to work at VaynerMedia. I got to a pretty good stage in the interview process, but I didn't get selected in the end. This was many years ago. And I've just kind of been a fan of his from afar. But I had noticed in the last few years, I kind of had just like stopped watching his stuff. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't because, you know, Tim Dillon went on that flipping amazing rant against him. It just kind of happened over time. And then what I realized, I remembered, is something what this guy mentions in this article, which is, um, I stopped watching Gary Vee three years ago, here's why. In Gary Vee's content, he always used to say, which I think was really handy, because I kind of look at him like the same way I look at someone like a Dave Portnoy. They can be a bit rah-rah and annoying as personalities, but at the kind of heart of it, they are proper businessmen who run proper businesses. It's not just some like, you know, ebook type of thing. And what he used to say when he was making his content was that at, there will come a time where you don't need to listen to what he has to say. You can be out there doing but he's that kind of person that needs to kind of be there to give you the kind of oomph, to give you the kick up the ass. But once you get the courage to kind of turn up, to show up and to do your best, you don't really need to have Gary Vee constantly shouting at you anymore. And I think that basically was what happened to me because I got kind of busy with actually doing and not needing motivation all the time. Because that could be a thing as well. Sometimes I've had that thing where like you're, you're paralyzed by analysis um, you just, you know, you just uh, procrastinate in general. And there's also the procrastination of watching a lot of motivational things. Like I remember early on, I used to be the kind of guy that would, you know, check out Tony Robbins books and stuff. Um, you know, all that sort of stuff, which you think is going to give you the key to something. But actually, the key of the message is just to be brave and to try things out and to put yourself out there and to not be afraid of criticism, all the sort of stuff that you know but you kind of keep listening to them thinking they're going to give you another nugget that's going to finally unlock something when really the unlock that you need is just to not have fear, which is obviously the hardest. Gary Vee's kind of committed his entire life to being an entrepreneur. That's his entire identity. Everything is wrapped around the idea of him being an entrepreneur. He's obsessed with businesses. He's obsessed with helping businesses, with making money and just being out there on the field. But obviously, over time, that's cost him a lot of things. And if you know, and if you're keeping an eye on what's been happening out there, Gary Vee recently went for a divorce. And um, according to some people online, again, who knows what happened and what the truth is, but according to some people online, people are suggesting that it was actually Gary Vee's wife who initiated the divorce. And a lot of people are suggesting that maybe she just, you know, had enough of that lifestyle, wanting to live a life of complete anonymity, because for the most part, Gary Vee does a good job of keeping his family kind of hidden away and not really in the public, which is quite nice. Similar to what Joe Rogan does. So they don't, you know, he chooses his life, but they don't. So they get to choose if they want to. But for the most part, he keeps his kids and his family away from the content. But you could imagine being Gary Vee and being a serial entrepreneur, like for real, not selling ebooks and just actually being there you know in the office all day long you know you watch these vlogs he wakes up extremely early he's clearly type a doesn't sleep much he's always going always on the run and you know it just never ends so you can imagine over time if you're a partner or somebody like this or you're trying to raise a family you can feel like you're probably on your own again this is just me like you know i'm speaking out i don't really know what the deals are but if it's true that his wife did leave that goes to show that the ultimate the price you have to pay if you want to be gary v if you want to fly private, if you want to be driven everywhere, if you want to have personal assistance, if you want to live in amazing homes, if you want to just be like worth millions and millions and millions and millions, then you have to know that that lifestyle will naturally affect your personal relationships. And there's nothing more personal than, you know, being divorced from the mother of your children because you just can't be around anymore. Then I also stumbled on this article that kind of speaks on the same thing where this guy came to the same realization that I'm just saying here now. We're like, you know, maybe being Gary Vee and following that kind of way of thinking isn't for everybody. But 
this article it says I stopped watching Gary V three years ago. Here's why. Um it was a really good one. But I also think what this misses is that Gary V's ultimate message, I feel like he was really clear because I, I got it and I was a bit of a dum dum. He was very clear in saying that this life of his isn't for everybody. Like he's just trying to give you a kick up the arse, give you the battery in the back so you can go and do what you're doing. But ultimately, if you want to live the life that he does, you're going to have to sacrifice a lot. And he spoke about all the time, you know, how he sacrificed his 20s, how he sacrificed the social life, being cool, all these type of things, going to the club because he was just obsessed with making money. He's obsessed with fucking building businesses and whatnot. And then in the end, he had to pay the ultimate price and now his wife left him and he's out there in the streets having to, you know, having to go out there and date again at his age. You know what I mean? It must be really mad but anyway this article is really cool let me quickly read some bits here to you it says Gary Vaynerchuk is a polarizing figure I can honestly I can't understand why sure the guy gets a little too heavy handed with the hustle porn but in recent years he's backed off that I still stopped watching him about three years ago though why well after building my online course business selling six figures of annual revenue a year i kept wondering why i was listening to a guy telling me to shut my eyes until i was 30 um it's not that it's bad advice it's just that it didn't mean anything to me anymore i grew out of it i mean why should i keep working my whole ass off when i'm making six figures yearly i think for a lot of people in their late 20s guy adventure's message might start getting a little hard to relate to for a variety of reasons here's a few of them I actually might do, I was thinking, you know what, all these guys like to do this flipping grift of doing courses. I think I may just put put out some videos. I'm actually going to decide to actually sit down and write a script and put together an actual video where I go and film on site and stuff of just like like a club roundup thing. I don't know, like because a lot, a lot of people messaging me all the time asking me, oh, what club should I go to? What places are cool? I might just do like a little guide of like the, the places that I like to go visit, the type of music that they play, nights to watch out for and stuff and just put it up there because I'm sure if this, if I was these guys, I'd be putting into an ebook. Do you know what I mean? Like hotspots in Berlin, hotspots in London. Duh, 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 duh. It's like, no, no, no. I'm just going to make a video and put it on YouTube for free. But yeah, it's hilarious. They, they always make loads of money teaching people how to do things, right? It's always funny. Those kind of courses is hilarious, which is why I respect Gary V more, by the way, because he never charged. He's always put stuff for free. There is no course or anything. Obviously, you can go to his seminars. So when he's speaking at certain places, but for the most part, they're all filmed and uploaded for free sometimes on the internet. So it's amazing. Anyway. He says, in the game of endless hustle, there are winners and there are losers. Gary might have, Gary might have you, Gary might have you think that it's pretty binary. You work hard, you win, and that's the end of it. But many work hard and don't win. I worked pretty hard at a variety of ventures in my twenties, and many times they did not work. I don't think Gary v is evil though, or a liar, or some sort of fraud. I think it's just not simple as work hard and be successful. Sometimes you work hard and get nowhere. And I think over time. Gary V kind of improved this message because he got a lot of blowback. A lot of people pushed back on this and said, hey, this work hard and you're going to get your dreams thing isn't true. Sometimes you work hard and it just doesn't work out. So I liked how he changed stuff and started approaching it through just practical business entrepreneur type of advice. So like the car boot, you know, the whole um, car boot sale type of thing, right? Garage sale type thing where he said, hey, go to garage sales, buy people's scraps that they don't want and maybe see if you can sell them on eBay and make a little bit of a tidy profit. And then maybe that could be a little hustle that you do on the weekends to afford you an extra bit of money to go out for dinner or whatnot or to go on holiday. Like those type of practical bits of advice I thought were amazing because it kind of put entrepreneurship in some level of perspective so not everybody's going into it thinking oh i want to be travis kalanick i want to be flipping the guy that did um what you call it airbnb and all that sort of stuff like for a while it felt like when it came to entrepreneurship everybody was thinking of being mark zuckerberg everyone wanted to create the next facebook the next uber the next this when really entrepreneurship is that got very different levels like there's like the guy that's selling fruits in the market there's a person, you know, selling stuff door to door. Like there's different levels and different ways you can kind of approach it. And sometimes it can just be as simple as finding something that kind of facilitates or helps you live the lifestyle that you want to live or that kind of allows you to afford the things that you like, whatever it may be. But it doesn't always need to be highbrow, crazy, I want to sell out IPO type of things. It could just be practical stuff that can actually help you kind of, you know, in your day to day. It continues. 
first and foremost, I fully endorse hustling. Hustle your fucking ass off for it to accomplish your dreams. You owe it to yourself to see what's on the other side of that rainbow. And if you don't ever see it, you might regret it for the rest of your life. Luckily, I've seen what's on the other side of the rainbow. I did everything he told me and I became successful. I work from home, travel a lot, and I've made a lot of friends around the world. So now what? Was it worth it? Gary speaks a lot about hustling, but he hardly ever talks about life after hustling. Does it never stop? It's almost like Gary V's written one of a half written one half of an incredible book and forgot to sit down and fresh flesh out other half. We really only listen to certain creators. As long as they're relevant to our own personal struggles, I simply grew out of Gary V's message, which leads me to my next point. I think he completely missed a point though. This is why I think personally um the book uh four hour work week by tim ferris gets a really bad rap but i thought tim ferris nailed it when four hour work week came out the whole idea behind it you know the, the the title was meant to be provocative and get people's attention but the four hour work week model wasn't so you could have you know all the time in the world to just sit on the beach and sip pina coladas the whole idea behind a four hour work work week was to create a muse like a business that you could have that could basically generate you money without you having to like be on it all the time so that would include you know affiliate marketing it could include um reselling on amazon and all that sort of stuff all that kind of all fulfilled by amazon all that sort of stuff right in the early stages but the idea behind it was that the time you had free you could then pursue the things that you actually wanted to do whether it was a hobby whether it was another profession whether it was getting qualifications whatever it may be it kind of afforded you that time but it wasn't to just like do nothing whereas i think nowadays these hustle merchants these hustle porn addicts online they push this idea yeah this is me personally they push this idea that they want to be entrepreneurs and they're all about the hustle but really what they want is just to live an easy life where they get to drive lamborghinis around every day but they don't understand that actually to be an actual businessman an actual entrepreneur it actually means you have to be working for most part nine to nine most days you're putting out fires every day you're basically a you know at work personal psychologist or psychiatrist in some respects um it's pretty stressful and it can take its toll on you but it doesn't really afford you the ability to kind of go to dubai or to go to turks and caicos or, or flip it dominican republic all the time because you just got so much on that stuff doesn't apply obviously your lifestyle will be somewhat you know um easy but in terms of your work life it's not going to be easy at all but i think they kind of conflate those two things but anyway it continues he says we changed five years ago gary's message really spoke to me i was 22 and hungry ready to experience all the facets of work and life now i'm but i'm battle weary tired and looking shift looking to shift gears into actually enjoying my life um in short i changed people changed too what was interesting to people five years ago may not be interesting to them now um may not be just them now maybe they wanted to hustle their face off until they were 30 or five years ago but now they just want to settle down and start a family honestly i've recently wondered what's so special about a nomadic life i live in many parts of the world and i've traveled a lot but i've given up having a home base with common friends and loved ones all my previous friendships have been withered away because i was so busy the thought of traveling now just exhausts me because i now i know i'll be staring starting from zero to yet again i want to stop starting from zero i want to live a life now i want someone who will love me and support the base around me i'm not looking to start another business i'm looking to start an actual life and while gary v never tells people not to create a beautiful life for themselves he doesn't give much insight on how to do it either because that's you know what this is a good point here he made at the end here while gary v never tells people not to create a beautiful life for themselves he never gives them an insight to either because he hasn't got one that's why the reality of it he hasn't got one the guy is probably pretty lonely and he essentially has to you know he's just the way he's wired is that he likes to be busy when it comes to business but he hasn't got enough time in his day to build personal relationships or to be there for his family hence why he's now divorced do you know what i mean it's just part of life like it's one of those weird things that you have to kind of see and people don't see it but that's why i think tiktok and stuff has been really refreshing because on one end you've got a lot of people on tiktok who lie and grift and kind of pretend that business is one way but then on the other side of things you got the cold out reality of it like for instance like all those people prior to the mass layoffs like google and facebook and stuff that were basically showing off that they did nothing during the day they would turn up to their facebook offices and be eating flipping you know um uh what you call it 
uh, leftover oats and stuff and they'll be having breakfast at work they'll be going to the gym the sauna meditating all this nonsense that had nothing to do with actually working so you got to see that a lot of people actually waste time and don't actually you know the, the same people that are like oh, i don't have enough time to do x y and z are the ones who are flipping you know at the flipping um bar at work just doing absolutely nothing and just checking over emails quote unquote but then the other side, what he did see is that he's see a lot of really mundane people working in really mundane areas of life and just getting the job done. And you see how boring and laborious um, and really stressful their job is if they're an entrepreneur, where they have to kind of look after, you know, take their kids to school before work, drive over to work, put out this fire, put out that fire. You see them take a lunch break at really late in the evening. I think all those things on TikTok have really been uh, eye opener for people to see, you know, what the grifters look like the ones who purport to be busy and what the actual people who are busy look like and then to figure out in your head do you actually want to be a serial entrepreneur or do you just want to earn 500 pound more a month 500 dollars more a month a thousand more dollars a month um just to kind of afford you the things that you like in terms of your lifestyle and luxuries that you kind of enjoy that maybe is the main thing about it but um it continues here last bit and then we'll move um i'm I, I prior, I'm, tr I'm prioritizing life over hustle i love gary v he gave me this incredible life, a bit of financial independence and the ability to see the countries most people can only dream of. Thank you, Gary, for the bottom of my heart. But I'm ready to focus on my life now. How to build a happy life for myself and close friends and family nearby? Many businesses um, books look to tell you to quit your job and start your own home at home business. But then what? There is no guide for life after that. For instance, it's hard to understand how to make a new friends when you're working by yourself all day. Normally, your friends would be your people you work with. That's gone. Now what? Not to mention it gets pretty isolating to have people not understanding you. Every time someone asks you what you do for a living, I want I want you to disappear. It's such a hard question to answer, and I'm always worried, and I always get weird looks when I'm say I don't I don't when I'm done answering it. It's lonely at the end of Gary V's rainbow, even though there are a lot of blessings you get find along the way. For that reason, I stopped listening to him entirely. I still love you, Gary. I'll do it all over again, exact same way, with no regrets. And I think that was a very poignant message and very true, and something that I kind of saw, especially once I rewatched that interview with him with Diary of a CEO, which I thought was really touching. But it also just reminded me as well. Oh yeah, why did I stop watching him also? But because I just I just started doing stuff, so I didn't really need a rah rah message anymore. But Gary V was still an important important part for me to kind of get to the point where I'm at now at the moment because those constant reminders those practical tips about getting started were really really important